My parents have removed me from their will and their inheritance due to the fact that I love to travel, claiming that I'm only putting the family at risk by going overseas and that all of their health problems are because I go out of the country. And now, after I introduce them to my long-distance girlfriend from South America, they've gone no contact with me and are now refusing to go to my future wedding. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So I'm in a long-distance relationship with my girlfriend. It's all going really well and she is a lovely person. And this will be important for background information later on. Now, my parents have always been extremely anti-travel and have never really traveled except for social obligations, such as a funeral or a wedding. But when it comes to me, I love traveling. It is the main passion or hobby in my life, and I have been to multiple countries, mostly in Latin America, but I've also been to Europe as well. Every time I have traveled internationally, we go through a whole song and dance of my parents barraging me with conspiracy theories, as well as passive-aggressive behavior, threats, and a lot more. They believe with every fiber of their being that U.S. citizens are immediately taken and disappeared the moment they step off a plane. And they even think this about Americans visiting Canada or the United Kingdom. They believe that the fact that I travel will lead to someone hacking their bank accounts and steal their sizable savings, which is numbered in the millions of U.S. dollars. They also blame their health issues on my travels. Any and all attempts of mine to show them that their views are wrong are just flatly ignored. When I travel to Europe, they reacted by refusing to communicate with me for three months. When I traveled to Latin America previously, they did the same thing, but they also called the police to send a police officer to my house to convince me to not go on vacation. After my trip, they sent me long emails about how the fact that I traveled had caused them to have health problems and that it's my fault for being a bad son. I tried my best to ignore these behaviors and keep the peace, but also, I just tried to remember that they would leave an inheritance for me with a life-changing sum of money whenever they pass away, so I simply continued to travel and not tell them about my plans. My most recent trip was to meet my long-distance girlfriend's family in South America. I had no plans to tell my parents, but she insisted on being presented to my family via FaceTime. The FaceTime call had the reaction that I expected. My dad was cool, but my mother was rude and offensive, and said mean things about my girlfriend's family due to their nationality. My family went no contact for a number of weeks, and hit me up to inform me that they have removed me from their will, that I am no longer welcome to visit them, and that they will not attend my wedding if I get married in the future. They said they will donate the inheritance to political causes they support instead. Now, my girlfriend is adamant that I do something to restore the relationship with my parents. However, I have no idea how to accomplish that, considering my family's hardline stance, and the fact that I, as a 33-year-old man, refuse to be bullied by my family to abandon my passion in life. Now, as some side notes, I'm financially well off and I am a homeowner, to the point that I don't have to worry about bills or groceries or anything like that, and I'm able to save a comfortable amount of money each month. However, the inheritance money would be life-changing because it's enough that I could retire immediately whenever the time comes. Also, it's very important to know that my girlfriend does not know about the inheritance and is unaware of my parents' financial status, as we have not talked about that at all. So I honestly feel so stuck, and I seriously don't know what to do. Yeah, your parents sound incredibly unhinged, and if I'm being completely honest, they kind of sound super racist. I'm not trying to be mean, and I'm not trying to make some weird judgment call against them, but based on the way they're talking about people outside the United States, as well as people of different nationalities, it really seems like they consider anybody who's not from America as some kind of, like, problem or a health risk. And that, in my opinion, is so disgusting and uncalled for. But more to the point, it really seems like they're trying to control every aspect of your life. And they're doing it in these, like, weird, passive-aggressive ways, where they're trying to find some way to get you to stop traveling. It's almost like they're going to use the inheritance money and try and, like, use it against you in some kind of way. Some kind of weird bartering chip just so you can stay in America. But in reality, there's nothing wrong with traveling. Like, that's a good and healthy thing to do. So for them to act like this and treat you like garbage is just so uncalled for. Because you do not deserve this kind of treatment. So I know if I was in your shoes, I would just be like, okay, fine, I guess I'm not going to get any kind of inheritance. I'm going to plan my life and if I'm getting nothing, then I'm getting nothing. Because these people do not control your life. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. An idiotic group of customers refused to tell me that they have food allergies that I need to be aware of, choosing instead to wait until the last possible second just to ask for some kind of alternative. And I've honestly never been more annoyed by a group of customers 
customers in my life. Here's what happened. So at the restaurant I work at, I had a party of about 30 people yesterday. Now, this was all standard stuff. It wasn't anything crazy. They chose a dinner package, which has about six entree options, comes with a choice of two salads, either Caesar or the house Italian, and pistachio ice cream. Since there are 30 people, I wait for everyone to sit down and then I get their attention. I go through my 30 second speech. I tell them my name. I tell them about our salad and that our ice cream has tree nuts in it. So if you have an allergy to nuts or anything else, please let me know. Now, everybody in the party was watching and listening. There was nobody whispering to each other. No one was on their phone. They all honestly seemed engaged. Well, one girl, about 14, raised her hand and said that she's allergic to nuts. So I said, no problem. We have a nut-free ice cream package separately. I go around and I take their orders and I start bringing out drinks and salads. One lady gets halfway through her Italian salad and then she asked me if it has mayo in it. I say yes and then I ask her why she's asking that and she says to me that she's allergic to mayonnaise and then she asks for something else. So I get her a balsamic salad which is not part of the package that they ordered but obviously I will make an exception due to allergies. I just wish that she told me when I asked about the allergies in the first place but I thought to myself whatever. I drop off the balsamic and four other women at the table start asking for balsamic as well even though they are mostly done with the salads they already have. I say to them no I'm sorry the Italian comes with a package that you pre-ordered. They then look at me and say but she was allowed to get balsamic why can't I? So I respond by saying she's allergic to mayonnaise. They are the typical needy party but we eventually get through it. I start dropping off ice cream and get the nut free one out first then drop off to all the kids and then I start with the adults. I lay the pistachio down in front of a 30 year old man and he asks for vanilla instead. I said to him sorry pistachio comes with a package and I've already pre-scooped all of the ice cream which is something that I do myself. He then looks at me and says oh but I'm allergic to pistachios and trust me the look I gave this man was very telling. If a server asks you if you have any allergies just tell them. It's really simple. Now obviously they could have both been lying about their allergies but I have no way of knowing that and I have to take their claims very seriously but if you know you're just being a picky jerk then lie about your allergies earlier please. That way I don't have to double back and redo things that I've already done to accommodate you. And overall, I honestly can't believe that out of all of these people, the only one smart enough to tell me about her allergy is the teenager. That has seriously got to be super annoying to deal with. I can't imagine being a server and being like, okay, if you've got allergies, let me know. And then you serve them their food and they're like, wait a second, I'm allergic to mayonnaise. And it's like, hey, did you remember that conversation I had like 20 minutes ago? Why are you waiting until you're halfway done with your salad before you tell me something like this? Like, I don't know about you, but if I had a health allergy that could like threaten my life and I'm like, hey, if I eat mayonnaise or tree nuts or whatever, I will definitely pass away on your floor. If I had that information in my head, I'd be saying it immediately. And for the record, I think that last guy was lying. I do not think that he was allergic to pistachios at all. I think he just wanted some different ice cream because he didn't like the flavor of the pistachio one. But regardless, this sounded like a really annoying thing to deal with. And I think the original poster handled it very well. Am I the jerk for telling my stepmom to not come to my graduation? All because she simply said she can't be in the same room as my mom. Because right now, I am so sick of their stupid dispute, and at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So for a bit of background, my parents divorced when I was three years old because my dad was having an affair with my stepmom. My mom and stepmom were work rivals and had a strong dislike for each other, even before the affair. There has always been speculation that this is why my stepmom willingly became the other woman, because she disliked my mom so much. Now, I was aware of this, and not because of my parents, but because of drama that would kick off with my dad's side of the family, and I was present for some of my dad's relatives' speculations about this. Now, my parents did not get along after the affair, and tensions were high whenever my mom and stepmom were in the same room. My stepmom had three pregnancies that ended in miscarriage. The first two were, I guess, typical normal miscarriages, but the third one caused my stepmom a lot of medical issues, and that led to her never being able to have kids ever again. So, she and my dad never got to have a living child together. After the third miscarriage, my stepmom wanted me around because she wanted to feel like a parent and she wanted to know that she would still have me. She and my dad asked my mom if they could extend their time with me and my mom laughed in her face and told her that she didn't care what she had been through and she would not let me be used as a band-aid. My stepmom argued that she deserved compassion for what she was going through and it would be good for me to get that little extra attention and love since I wasn't going to have any siblings ever. Well, my mom told her that she would never have compassion for her and didn't feel sorry 
for her at all. She told her she didn't deserve to be a mom after taking part in the end of my stability within my family. She did blame my dad as well, but that has never been focused on as much by my dad and stepmom or his family. After that, my mom and stepmom were never in the same place together. They had third parties take care of exchanges of me until I was old enough to hop out of a car and into the home I was returning to. Once they realized I knew details of what happened, my dad and stepmom were vocal about mom being cruel and hurtful to my stepmom and that was why they weren't ever in the same room together. A few times I even picked up on their desire for me to hate my mom for them but I just don't do that. I try to stay neutral which my mom encourages but if I have to pick in this situation I am team mom all the way. I'm graduating from high school in a couple of months and my dad and stepmother brought up that my stepmom doesn't feel like she should be around my mom and does not want to be there with my mom. They then told me that they feel it would be best if I make it clear to my mom that she can't be there. But I told them that my mom will be there. Then my stepmom told me that she can't be in the same room as her after what she did to her. So I said to her, okay, then just don't come. I told her I wasn't going to beg her to be there and that I wanted my mom there and they weren't going to stop me. They asked me how I could say that knowing how mom treated my stepmother and they asked me to be more compassionate. So honestly, am I the jerk in this situation? What should I do? Wow, your stepmom and dad will literally do anything to justify their affair. They'll play the victim. They'll play the assailant. They will literally gaslight you and guilt trip you. They'll try to turn you against your mom. Like seriously, these people sound awful. For starters, it's insane to me that the stepmom is trying to act like the victim as if they've been offended by what your mom has said to her. But in reality, she's just looking for something, anything to try and be like, oh yeah, this is it. This is why I hate your mom. She offended me. Oh my God. And that's like seriously insane to me. And even now, at the apex of your high school career, right when you're about to graduate, your dad and stepmom look at you and actually say, oh, you should just make sure your mom's not there. You need to make it clear that she can't be there. And it's like, what are these people doing? Do they really think that this strategy is going to somehow make them come out on top? Because right now it's only making them look like fools. So honestly, I'm so sorry you have to deal with this, but I am right there with you. I am team mom 100% of the way because your dad and stepmom are absolutely out of line here. And the fact that they want to ban your mom from your graduation, in my opinion, is completely uncalled for. Am I the jerk for canceling my gender reveal party for my baby after my husband tells everybody about my baby's gender? Because right now I'm very upset. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. My husband and I had planned to do a very small gender reveal on Easter for my husband's family. And since this is our last child and we missed out on doing all the fun stuff like a gender reveal for our other child due to COVID restrictions, I just wanted to get this experience once. Well, my husband's brother has been bothering my husband for weeks as he wants to be told the gender since we have known about it for two months now. Now, my husband consistently kept telling him no and that he needed to wait for the gender reveal just like everybody else. Well, last night, my husband finally had had enough of his brother and just gave in and texted him the gender. Now, I was not asked if this was okay and he just did this on his own. This is also not the first time my brother-in-law has made everything about what he wanted and not what we wanted. He also had told the family that we were pregnant without our permission, all before we had announced to everybody too, by the way, because he felt that he could and we never told him not to tell anybody. And this is along with many other things over the years. So honestly, most things with him are a sensitive topic for me. Well, when I found out that he was told and that he told his wife, I told my husband I had no interest in doing the gender reveal any longer. My husband had also already slipped to his mom by using the gender related pronouns when talking to the baby. So she already knows the gender, which means her husband does too. There were only going to be six people at the gender reveal. And now that four out of the six already know the gender, I said that it's not worth all my time, effort and money to buy everything and set it up to only surprise two people. It's just not worth it in my eyes. Well, I'm now being told that I'm just ridiculous, that I'm a jerk, I'm being overly emotional, and that I need to see a therapist for my mental instability, for being angry that my brother-in-law got his way again, and that I don't even want a gender reveal any longer. I honestly feel like my brother-in-law yet again took away my chance of getting a -a once-in-a-lifetime experience, and he's done similar things like this in the past. So am I the jerk for not wanting to have this gender reveal any longer? What should I do? Okay, first and foremost, I don't think you're the jerk for canceling the party altogether, but I do think you're misplacing the blame. Yes, it sounds like your brother-in-law is incredibly obnoxious and it's really good not to tell him anything, but this doesn't seem like a brother-in-law problem. If 
anything, it seems like a husband problem. Like, your husband simply can't keep any secrets, it seems like. He literally told four of the six people what's going on and what the gender of the baby is. And honestly, I'm right there with you. If four out of the six people already know the gender of the baby, then there is no point in having a gender reveal at all. I would cancel it as well. Like, that seriously is so stupid. And the fact that your husband would call you mentally unstable, all because you're disappointed in his actions, in my opinion, is so toxic. Like, you're not mentally unstable, but instead, your husband's an idiot for not keeping a better lid on the baby's gender. Like, seriously, this all comes back to him spilling the beans, not on you. Because in my opinion, I think you're the only one being rational in this scenario. And it's also really sad that your husband's not, like, standing up for you, and not, like, standing by your side, or even understanding where you're coming from in the first place. So no, you are definitely not the jerk, and I think the way your husband and your family is reacting is completely uncalled for. Am I the jerk for having conflict with my husband about how he wants to resolve going to not only my friend's wedding, but also going to a concert with all of his friends? Because right now, the way we have things set up really does not sit well with me, and at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. My husband told me his close friends that live a few hours away want to come to our city for a four-day music festival and stay with us. And I say, great, I love them. And he doesn't get to hang out with them very much. We haven't seen them since November, and we see them maybe four to five times a year. Then he tells me the date is over the May weekend of my friend's wedding. Now, for some background, this is not just any friend. She was maid of honor at our wedding. He's known her for the seven years since we've been together. She was a huge help at our wedding, and her fiance even helped us with cleanup. I'm in her wedding now about three hours away, and I'll be gone from Thursday until Sunday. While he likes my friend, he doesn't want to miss the time with his friends. I suggested he go Thursday and Friday to the concert, and then drive up for the wedding Saturday and Sunday, and his friends can stay at our house. But he doesn't want to do that. For starters, he says he wants as much time with his friends as possible, since he doesn't see them that much. But also, the concert is expensive, and he would have to buy one ticket that covers all the days. If I really want him to be there, his suggestion was to drive the three hours to the wedding on Saturday, stay for the ceremony and reception, but not drink at all, and then leave immediately afterwards, and drive the three hours back. Now, I did get mad at that point and said that didn't work for me because I don't want him to go only to be in a rush to leave. I want to relax and enjoy my friend's special day with my husband. We can relax and have a couple of drinks without worry. I even have a hotel room and there is a shuttle bus back so I was looking forward to not having to worry about finding a ride. Well, he doesn't see the big deal. I said I don't want him to attend just out of obligation and neither with a bride and groom. They're paying a lot for the guests to be there and I said that even if he left Sunday morning I could get on board with that even though it's still not ideal for me. Well, he got mad and said that he doesn't get to see his friends that much and he feels isolated. For reference, we moved from my work about six months ago to live in a city that we don't know many people. I said that we should look for ways to help that, but that this shouldn't change anything about these plans. I feel isolated too, but I wouldn't dream of missing his best friend's wedding if things were reversed. He did come back an hour later and say he was sorry that he hurt my feelings and he recognizes that it's important for me and of course my best friend and he wanted to find a way to meet both of our needs. So honestly, am I the jerk for not wanting him to drive home that night? What should I do? I don't think you're the jerk for not wanting him to drive home, but I really have to disagree with all of your logic here. With his original plan, he would be there for the ceremony and sure, he could probably stay a little bit longer like at the reception or something like that. I think that might be some wiggle room to like have some kind of compromise, but it seems like you're getting really weird about the fact that he's driving driving back home. Like, we're talking about friends he hasn't seen in a long time. He moved to a new city, so he obviously feels homesick, and he misses these people in his life. So, it would make sense that he would want to go see them. So, in my opinion, I don't think there's anything wrong with him going to the concert, as well as fulfilling this obligation to come to the wedding. And honestly, I've gotta say, I think the bride and groom will be completely fine with him showing up. They're not gonna look at him and be like, wow, he doesn't want to be here. He's only here because he's obligated to be there. They're probably gonna be like, oh wow, he showed up. That's awesome. We're so glad he's here. This guy's willing to drive three hours just to go to this wedding and participate in a ceremony that's obviously important to you and your friend. If he didn't want to be there, he wouldn't show up. He would stay at the concert with his friends and be like, nope, I'm definitely not going. But he's willing to drive there. Like that, in my opinion, doesn't sound like someone who doesn't want to be at the wedding. And it doesn't sound like they're only there out of obligation. I'm sure he's going to be pleasant and like agreeable just like anybody else. So I don't think that that accusation is correct at all in my opinion and I think his willingness to be 
there shows a lot more than what you're assuming he's actually feeling. So in my opinion, I don't think you're the jerk for being worried about this, but I think the blame is being misplaced in a major way because it really seems like he's making a serious effort to be there at the wedding itself. And I think that deserves a lot more consideration, especially with the way that you're framing it. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.